My shoe's untied. Look at that. It wouldn't be Youth Sunday if you didn't have a shoe untied. Well, hello, everyone. Welcome to New Song. It's a typical Louisiana day, raining. Love it. Never in Michigan. Just kidding. Um, if you don't know who I am, I'm Tim. I'm the youth pastor here at New Song. And I'm so privileged and honored to be up here today. I'm so excited. I've been waiting all week for it. It's great. I'm excited. And like Scott said, today is Youth Sunday, and we have some awesome things planned. And I'm excited for it because I get to brag about our youth. Um, they're pretty awesome and cool. I might be a little biased, but I think it's true. They're some of the coolest people I've ever met. And so, yeah, we've had a busy June. If you can't see that by, see that by this video, we were at Student Life Camp in Talladega, Alabama, where we spent a week together. And we got in this bus, uh, 52 passenger bus, and we had 35 people. And we piled in, and we drove. We ate food all week together. We worshiped. We played games. We did small groups. And we really just dove into the word and grew together as a youth group, but also as followers of Jesus. And so that was awesome. And then this week, we had Youth Week, which was every day of us getting together alongside our new sixth graders and just doing awesome things. We, we served, we baked cookies for firefighters, we went to the food bank, we, we had a water day, we bowled, and we ended the week with a lock-in, which we stayed up from 7 p.m. all the way to 8 a.m., and it was crazy. I was asking people, I was like, hey, how does this usually work? I've never ran a lock-in before. Does anybody ever go to sleep? And they're like, yeah, about 2, 3 o'clock, people end up knocking out. There would only be a few people. That's not true. There was 80, 80 to 85% of our youth group was downstairs in that lobby going crazy until they left at 8 a.m. So whoever told me that, thanks for lying to me. Um, yeah, I was ready. It was fun. Um, I think I'm still recovering, but that's okay. Um, but yeah, and it's, it's been awesome, and it's been jam-packed, but it's been so worth it. Um, it's been so worth it, in fact, that since camp, we've had 10 students give their life to Jesus, and they said, hey, we want to follow Jesus. Yeah. Which is super cool. I mean, that's, that's 10 young people, 10 teenagers going against culture, going against the world, saying, hey, I'm going to follow Jesus. I'm going to follow Jesus, and I'm going to devote myself to this. And I don't care that it's going against maybe what my friends do or what my people at my school are doing. I'm going to follow Jesus. I'm going to go against the world and follow Jesus. And that's inspiring to see 10 teenagers say, hey, Jesus is my Lord, and I'm going to follow him. And so we're excited about that, and we want to celebrate that. And so as a church and as a staff, we've been kind of thinking about what are some ways we can celebrate the fact that Young kids, young students are putting their faith in Jesus and wanting to live eternally and, and live for him and make an impact for his kingdom. And so we're still formulating ways to celebrate that. And Youth Sunday is one of those ways. But also, if you go into our youth room, we have this cool thing happening on our wall. We got these bubbles with cool colors and things like that. And there's names on them. And those are the names of each student that's given their life to Christ recently. And we want everybody to know who those people are. And so if you have a chance, go check out the youth room. Maybe you'll see a name you know. Maybe you don't. And maybe you'll see a name and you say, hey, I want to pray over their walk with Christ. So make sure you do that. But we've also, in another way, done things with these little bubbles is if you go downstairs next to the uh, kitchen, there's the cross. And we've put their names on there as well to signify saying, like, hey, these people are giving their lives to Jesus. They've picked up their cross and they're saying, I want to follow Jesus. And so we're just so excited about that. And not only are students giving their life to Jesus, but the students that have been following Jesus for a while, man, ever since camp and ever since we left, and even before that a little bit, They've been on fire for Jesus. I mean, they've been wanting to grow deeper and deeper in his word and knowledge of him and their love for him and their love for others. They want to be held accountable. They want to grow. And they're hungry for Jesus. And our students that just give their life to Christ are also hungry for Jesus. So, I mean, we've got a lot of cool things happening here at New Song Youth, all right? And so we're really excited about it, and we want to share it with you. Um, and so the cool thing is about all these students is that they're not just putting John 10.10, 10, kind of our theme verse at youth, in their bio and saying, hey, I'm a Christian on social media. They're not just showing it by just coming to church on Sunday. They're trying to follow him with every part of their being. And it's inspiring, and it's cool, and it's, and it's cool to see young people in a world that isn't so Christ-like say, hey, I'm going to deny myself, pick up my cross, and follow Jesus. It's inspiring. It's challenging. It pushes me as their youth pastor to say, hey, if they can do it, I can do it. If they can say, hey, Jesus is the most important thing in my life, I can prioritize that too. And so it's super exciting. Um, and when you see young people take their faith serious, it does push us. It does inspire us to be more devoted to Jesus. It should inspire all of us to take Jesus more serious. And, you know, the coolest thing about our youth is that they're bold. Um, we went to camp, and Colin up here, Colin's going to come up and talk in a little while, but, uh, and we had some other students too, but at the end of the week, at the end of rec, 
they asked, hey, does anybody want to come up and give a testimony? And three of our students got up and gave their testimony in front of complete strangers, which is totally hard. Two of our, I mean, one of our students has never even given their testimony before. So they got up in front of 60 strangers and told them about Jesus and what Jesus has done in their life. And so we're just so happy for the boldness that our youth have and how excited they are for Jesus. And here's the thing. We cannot and should not take our youth at this church and in the church as a whole um, for granted. Um, they push us and inspire us as a whole community to follow Jesus uh, and to truly be on fire him, to be devoted for him. Um, and Scott said it earlier, they're not just the future of the church. They are the church now. Um, it's very easy to look at them and say, hey, you know, they're going to be strong Christians 20 years from now, 10 years from now, but right now they're just the youth. No, they're the part of the church now. They're part of this community, and we need to treat them like that. Um, they're not a subcategory. They're part of this community just as much as anybody else is. And so we're really excited for what God is doing in their lives. And um, it's going to be awesome what they, what they do when they come up here and share. And so we're so excited. Um, they are the next generation of the church, but they are the church now. And so um, we cannot take them for granted. And when I was thinking about verses and what, what we should talk about, you know, the classic youth verse popped in my head, 1 Timothy 4.12. And it's going to be on the screen. And it says, don't let anyone look down on you because... You are young, but set an example for the believers in speech and conduct and love and faith and purity. And that is the classic youth verse. You know, when you think of young people and following Jesus, that's what we think of. But that's okay because it's so true. It's so true. And here's the thing when it comes to our youth. It tends to happen. We underestimate them. We underestimate them. We overlook them. We take them for granted. And that can't happen. We cannot underestimate them or look down on them because they're young. Some of the most inspiring people I know are young people following Jesus today. So we cannot underestimate our youth. We cannot take them for granted because they're the foundation, not only for now but for the future. They're going to be here for Jesus and, and for the kingdom of God, and they want to make an impact and, we can impact, and we cannot ignore our youth either. A lot of communities, a lot of churches you'll go to, and the youth is just not a part of it at all. It's almost like we talked about earlier, a subcategory, and that can't happen. We cannot take our youth for granted because... They can be an example in the way they live, the way they love, they, the way they want to live by faith, the way they pursue purity and righteousness. They can be an example to all believers, not just their peers. And so we're so you know, thankful that we have students that are following Christ because not only are they following him, but they're trying to lead by example. And here's the thing. Just because our youth may be teenagers, that doesn't mean anything to diminish who they are. They're teenagers not first, they're Christians first. And they may be young, but they're still Christ followers who cannot be underestimated because the Holy Spirit that all of us have if we claim to follow Jesus lives in them just as much as it lives in us. And because they are the next generation of the church and they are among the church, we must come alongside them. They're not a subcategory. We must come alongside our youth, disciple them, celebrate them, Walk with them, hold them accountable, encourage them. They're a part of this community, and we have to treat them like that. It's our job as a community to do this, to show them what it means to be the church. It's our job. It's not just my job or Pastor Scott's job. It's all of our jobs. We're all in this together. Just as much as we have engaged groups and other things in place for adults, we need to do the same for the youth, bringing them alongside us, saying, hey, let's do this together. This is our community part of the larger church. And so we're going to find a lot of ways to do that. And one of those ways is Youth Sunday right now. And we're so excited to celebrate these students. And the students in our youth who know Jesus, they want people to know about it. Like I said earlier, they are bold. They want people to know about it. And so they, they proclaim Jesus wherever they can. And what's cool about it is that they don't want to just proclaim it here at church where everybody's going to accept them. They want to proclaim it at school, their teams, their families. They just want to talk about Jesus which is something to celebrate in itself because in a world that is shouting everything else at you, they want to shout Jesus. And so we're so excited about that, and it's awesome. And they want to boldly proclaim the gospel, and they want to boldly proclaim Jesus and share what he's done in their lives. And so we sat down, a few students and I, we sat down and recorded a video so they can do exactly that, share Jesus. So I'm going to play the video, check it out, and see how they share Jesus. My name is Jacob Bowden. My name is Riley Cangelosi. My name is Adam Blanchard. I am Noah Sanchez. What does it mean to follow Jesus? Jesus to me is this big guy who has saved us from our sins and who is the creator of the world. 
When I think about Jesus, I think about how he is 100% man and 100% God. So on one hand, he goes through the same struggles and like the same emotions as us. He walked with us on this earth. But on the other, he is perfection and he is the son of God and he was here to save us. Jesus to me is like a friend that is always by your side. You know, he's always got your back. No matter what you do, he'll forgive you. He's just the best friend you could have. Jesus is a friend to me who is always there for me in my dark times and who's always there in my struggles. But he's also a guide who leads me to right decisions, good choices, and leads me to life with him. What has Jesus done in your life? Jesus has forgiven me for a lot of things. Um, he's brought me back to the people of the church many times and he's shown me what life is really like and how great it can be without things of the world. Um, he saved me. He forgave me of my sins and, you know, he showed himself to me. Like, um, he's shown his presence. He's shown that, uh, he was there even when I was, like, doubting him. He, uh, he was there and, you know. Jesus has taught me to, you know, let go of literally anything else anyone says at the end of the day his word is above all and it doesn't matter what people think of you or how the world sees you it's god's judgment at the end of the day and um what he sees of us is his creations and that's all that really matters what jesus did in my life was he um during camp the pastor had said to raise your hand if you want to devote your life to jesus I wasn't going to raise my hand, but I heard this godly voice speak in my head telling me to raise my hand. So I raised my hand and I followed Jesus. What does it mean to follow Jesus? To follow Jesus is just to set an example for the people around you, like a godly example. Um, as youth, we're still growing up ourselves, but there's people who are younger than me who I can still set an example for. But it's also taking the time to learn from the people around you and just grow every single day in your walk with God. To follow Jesus means to give him your all, to not devote yourself to things of the world, but devote yourself to him. Because in the end, he's the only thing that really matters. And he's, he saved us and he, we should be giving him all that we have. Uh, it means to not just do it for the benefits, you know, just to, uh live your life as Jesus would want you to live your life, you know, do everything for him and with him. And, uh, you know, like in any situation go, uh, would Jesus do this? Like in whatever situation you're doing, you know, not be a, not be a fan, but to be a follower, you know, not just do it for the benefits to actually live your life that way to actually believe it. What it means to follow Jesus is that you will always be on his side and that you will follow him through life's troubles and problems. Perfect. One, it was so much fun making that video. I mean, we all got together and we got to do it together. And it was funny because we're all jam packed in that prayer room. And, you know, they, they wanted to watch each other do it. And they're all kind of squeamish. I'm watching them here. And they're hearing their voices, and they're all kind of like, oh, I hate to hear my voice on the screen. And so it's just kind of funny to watch them do it. But I just want to let you know, Jacob and Riley are here. They were in the video. And we're so proud of you for doing that. Um, I'm proud for all of them doing it. Um, it's so hard for anybody to get up in front of a camera and talk. And so we're proud of you guys for sharing your faith and doing it boldly. And, you know, it's awesome. And the thing is, the youth have gotten in front of the camera to talk about Jesus. And that's not the only place they're doing it. But I know adults to have a hard time getting in front of a camera and just talking, especially about Jesus. And so we're thankful that God has given them boldness to be unashamed about the gospel. And so speaking on that, we're going to continue our service, and we're going to do something a little different. I know you guys are probably tired of hearing just me talk already. And so I wanted to bring a few students up here, and we're going to kind of do like a little uh, roundtable talk. We're going to do kind of a live youth talk show for you guys. And so we're going to have Kendall and Colin come up. They're going to come and talk about Jesus with us. Here you go. I'm going to delegate that to you. Move that. Thank you. Anywhere you want to put it. Perfect. Yep. And whichever stool you want, whichever one fits your fancy. 
Actually, I want that. I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, thank you, Kendall and Colin. This is Kendall Shank. Kendall, you're going to be a freshman, correct? Here's a mic for you. Hey, man, live things. We're always ready. There's that mic. So Kendall's going to be a freshman at Dutchtown, and Colin, you are going to be a senior, correct? Yes, sir. That's exciting. So first, I want to start off with this. We have something to celebrate. We talked about celebrating things. Recently, Kendall has devoted her life to Jesus, and so we just want to celebrate that first and foremost. Oh, yeah. We're so excited for Kendall with his new walk. Yeah, exactly. We're so excited that you have decided to take this new journey with Christ and really just devote yourself to Jesus because like we've talked about, like Adam said in the video, like Noah said, and like all you said, that's all that matters. And so we're excited that you did that. And the first thing I want to ask you is this. What even made you say, hey, I want to follow Jesus? I want to, make it, I want to say that that's my Lord and I'm going to follow him. What, what led you to that decision? Um, so I've been going through a lot in the past like year, year and a half. And I've learned that there's like people, like worldly people, you know, like mom, dad, my siblings, like some friends that are like sometimes there for you, but you don't always want to talk to them because you're scared. But I learned that you should never be scared to talk to Jesus. He's the only person that's always there for you. You can always talk to him. He should be your person. So I just like... There's a fire that like lighted inside of me that said I could always go to him. I could always talk to him about whatever I was going through, and I shouldn't be scared of that. Awesome. Yeah, and it was cool because it was the Sunday after camp, and you know, a lot of students had already given their life to Christ, and Kendall, she likes to think about things. She likes to take them in. She doesn't like to just make rash decisions, which I respect because I'm somebody <laughs> that makes rash decisions. So um, <laughs> what was cool is she came up to me after service and pulled me aside and said, hey, I think I, I want to give my life to Jesus. And we stopped everything right there. I stopped every conversation. We <laughs> sat down and we talked, and she gave her life to Jesus. And something like you had mentioned is that there was this feeling just kind of starting to build up in you saying, okay, I need to follow this guy. He's the truth, and like you said, he's always there. And so that's encouraging to know that, and I'm sure that brings a lot of peace. And you, you said a cool thing is that, you know, I know my mom, my dad, my parents, my friends are there for me, but at the end of the day, they're sinners, they're people like me, and they're going to let me down at times, even if they don't mean to, but Jesus never will. And so that's an encouraging word. So we thank you for sharing that. And so next I want to ask Colin uh, a question. So, Colin, you've been in the youth for how long? Uh, four years. Four years. How did you even end up joining our youth group? How did that happen? So, a um, little bit of backstory. My dad, he was an alcoholic and a, a drug addict, and he passed away when I was nine. I didn't see him very much, but I still was very close to him. So, after that, I really fell like into the state of depression. I didn't talk to my family. I didn't talk to any of my friends. I really just wanted to be left alone. Uh, it escalated, and in middle school, I started using drugs. And um, it got really bad, like ninth grade. And as I was going into ninth grade, one of the, the youth, Jonas, um, he invited my little sister to come because they were friends. And so my sister came, and my parents were like, well, you're not going to sit here, and we're taking your sister. You're not just going to sit here alone, so you're going to go to youth. I didn't have a choice. I was forced to come. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So I came to youth. And um, Garrett greeted me, and he just had this big smile on his face and was really, really welcoming. Uh, I sort of came in. I started seeing some people I knew from school. So I was like, all right, I'm going to keep coming back. And then uh, all the way up to camp in June of 2019, I decided that I was going to give my life to Christ, and I did uh, June 6th at 1.19 a.m. That's awesome, man. And what I love about that when you share that story is that the, the details of, like, I gave my life to Christ, dude, 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 dude you know, <laughs> it's just like you know it, and it's because it's important to you, right? I remember the exact conversation. Exactly, and that's cool, and, you know, I love hearing how you joined youth, and it's funny because I feel like there's three, not three, there's more than three, but a lot of the reasons you hear people joining youth is, for me, it was, there's a girl, so I'm going to go to youth. <laughs> Two, my parents made me. Three, I always go to that church, or a friend invited me, and so... It was one of those reasons, but like, like we were shared, that's God's plan for you, and you made it, and, and eventually you gave your life to Christ, and now look, you're up here on stage, now I don't have to talk as much, you can do a lot of the talking, I mean, it works out, it's God's plan, and so, no, we're really excited for that, and we're glad you joined the youth, and Kendall, honestly, how did you join the youth, is it just because you've been here, did you want to join it, what was it like for you? So, my sister... Audrey Woo -woo. back there. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. She, I think she got invited. It was either Brock or Dana that invited her. And then she's, she always told, like, stories about it. And I was like, I want 
to go see Stark and I go to youth? But, like, you have to be in sixth grade. So the summer going to my sixth grade year, um, she brought me here, and I, like, fell in love with the youth group just because the dynamic was like a family. So, like, like I was going to try out other ones, but I like this one the most just because mm -hmm. – it was on the smaller side. Everybody knew each other. Everybody was friends. And, like, you could talk to everybody about anything. Nice. Yeah. I think, I think that's the cool thing about our youth is that it is very welcoming and that there is this sense of it doesn't matter if you play sports or if you're in band or if you don't do anything at all. If you're there, you're the family. You're part of the family, and you're there, and we're going to love on you like Christ did. And uh, I think that's a big reason, too, why people keep coming back or people really – continue to pour into Jesus because they see how people love them through the love Christ shows them. And so that's really cool. And you kind of answered a question I had later, so thank you. You just have to re-say all that. Okay, but okay, no. got it. Um, so, and actually the question's up now, so <laughs> say something different, all right? Okay, okay, okay. okay, okay. Um, so for both of you, I want you both to answer, you know, how important is this community of youth group to you? Um, what does it provide? What, is, what, is, what do you see God do through it? Um, what, what, what do you enjoy about it? What do you love about it? Um, don't say what you hate about it. Um, I just hate Tim. He's yeah. the worst. Yeah, he's the worst. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad that guy's not here. Um, so, yeah, so, you know, whoever wants to go first, but how important is it to you? What does it provide? What's your favorite thing about it? Go ahead. Um, they've definitely, I mean, like, this is the group that I first came out that I did drugs. Um, I didn't even tell my parents. The only people that I knew were my friends that weren't my friends, but, right. and then the youth group. So they've provided me a family. They've provided me a place I can be vulnerable. And they've just helped me grow in Christ that, you know, it, it's funny because when I first came, I was having people pray over me. And now I'm praying over people. And I'm having people ask me to be there while they're devoting their life to Christ. And it's weird because I was asking people to do that like a year ago. And there's just been this sudden turnaround in my faith and, in this youth group that I get to see, you know, people like Jacob and Adam and Noah, I get to see how they've grown. And it's, it's weird. But it's, it's, a, it's a good weird. Yeah. And it's an experience that this youth group provided me. Yeah. And just seeing them be vulnerable lets me be vulnerable and I can learn from them. And ultimately I know that if I'm ever having any problems, I can go to, to Kendall or Tim or Scott or any of the youth and, any of the youth group, I mean, it could be a sixth grader or it could be a volunteer. You know, I know I can go to them and that they'll just sit down and they'll listen to, I'm sorry, and they'll listen to me and just give me the, the advice or words that I need to hear. Yeah. I think something that you touched on, you know, not just about our youth group as a whole, but just being a follower of Jesus is that turnaround, right, where it's like, man, a year ago, I was the one who didn't know what I was doing and now I'm, I'm helping you know, somebody else in that way, and I'm sure that's such a, it's a fulfilling feeling, and it pushes you and probably encourages you to say, I want to keep going. I want to, I want to take this continually seriously and not allow anything to get in my way, and so we're glad that you have that turnaround. We want to celebrate that, and we're thank you, like, praise Jesus that you've able to say, hey, I'm going to do a complete 180 and just say, hey, Jesus is everything I want, and I want other people to know that, and so we're glad, and we're happy for you, Colin, and we're glad you're up here. Uh, Kendall, do you, what do you, what do you have to say about our youth? Um, I hate the youth so much. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Um, one of my favorite things is they, like, hype everybody up. So, like, I do these little smiley faces called bobs, okay? And every time we go somewhere, they're like, do you want a bob? Do you want a bob? Everyone at camp had a bob. Yeah. They did. They did. Um, and then, so, like, I also like to draw. So, I'll draw on people. I drew a flower on him. I drew words on him You're all right. kinds of stuff and but like every time I do it they're like you should be an artist for for sure like you should be a professional artist and it just makes me feel so happy or like if you come to church and you're wearing nicer clothes than you would at youth they're like you look so pretty and I'm like <laughs> ah they're just they're so nice and welcoming and at any time like a new person comes we're always like we're so happy that you're here. I hope you never stop coming. You're a part of the family now. You cannot stop coming. You have to come every Sunday. I don't know. It's just like, it, like I said earlier, it's a family. Definitely. Yeah. And it's the Bob thing. Yeah, the Bob's here. Um, it was so funny because we're sitting there during one of the nights of worship. 
And we look up, and it's like zoomed in on the guy playing guitar, the lead singer. And he has a bob. <laughs> Kendall does not miss anybody. I mean, I'm pretty sure, like literally when he says everybody at camp had a bob, they did. Or they were seeking her out to get bobs. Yeah, like, it was crazy. At least 75% yeah. had a bob, and I think it was like the other 25 wanted one. There was yeah. a couple people who came up to me, and they're like, are you bob? And I was like, I'm not bob, but I can give you one. <laughs> Yeah, we need, to, we need to start charging that. We can make some money off of that. Um, but no, yeah, and I think, I think you know, whoop, uh, you know, the thing that's cool is that'll be a youth one day. Um, the thing that's cool about, you know, what you said is that the youth is like, everybody hypes you up. And I would say that our youth group in itself is like a hype man. Um, not me, though, but everybody else. They hype up everybody else, not me. They roast me all the time. Um, but no, no. <laughs> but... The thing is, is when you come, we want you to know that we love you. We want you to know that you're, you're supported and that this is a safe place for you. And most of the time when a new person comes in, they're probably annoyed because we don't leave them alone. Um, like nobody does. We really don't. I, we really don't. You know, you know, as my job is used to make people feel comfortable as a youth pastor to make the new students feel comfortable and the students that we have there feel comfortable. But a lot of times our students take that out of my hand because they know how to do that because all they do is just show the love of Christ and they want people to know the love of Christ. And so we're so thankful for that, and we're thankful that we have hype men in our youth group uh, to support and just, you know, love on people. Let's go get vectored. What do you say? <laughs> get vectored. What does that mean? Vectored. Have you never seen Despicable Me? Get it together, Tim. I have seen it. I have seen it, but I'm just not well-versed. Anyway, speaking of verses, um, Romans 12.2 is going to pop up on the screen. It says, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And so, growing up, that was my theme verse for youth. Um, that's what we talked about all the time. It was actually Romans 1 through 2, but for this context, we're using just this section. And, you know, you both are followers of Jesus, and we know the verse says, you know, do not, do not be conformed to this world. Let God transform you. Let him renew your mind. But let's be real. We live, especially as young people, you know, even more so, we live in a world that is kind of anti-Jesus, anti-Christianity, anti-God. They want you to, you know, chase after the things of the world. And, and I mean, being a teenager... I was a teenager five years ago, you know, in high school. It's even different than it is now. You know, a lot has changed, even from five years. And so I just kind of want to ask you guys, what is it like being a young Christian in high school in 2021? Um, for me, it's definitely, it's, everyone claims to be a Christian. Like, I go to school, and I can ask about Christianity, and everyone claims to be a Christian. But when it comes down to it, very few people are actually living a Christian life. So it's an internal struggle, and it's a battle between if they're a Christian and they can do that, why can't I if I'm a Christian? And then what, uh, what, what would God do? Yeah. It's, it's, it's hard because society tells you one thing, the Bible tells you another thing, and then people combine them. Hmm. So it's very yeah. difficult to find, like, who's a real Christian, yeah. and then who can I really, really trust but then also trying to love everyone, even when I know they're being hypocritical about their faith. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's a big thing, especially, you know, down here more so than where I'm from in the north. You know, religion isn't as, isn't as big of a thing up north, especially when it comes to taking your faith serious. I mean, we probably have more, um, I guess, like not. People just don't take their faith serious, right? In the south, it's more traditional. It's more cultural. It's more part of the family. And you are a Christian. You are this. You are that. Um, but like you said, you have a lot of people that claim to be Christian, but they don't, they don't live it. They don't live it out. Just like that verse we had earlier from 1 Timothy, you know, everybody sets an example. But, you know, Christians, were especially all of us, are supposed to set an example by the way we love, live, pursue purity, purity and faith. But in, in this world that you live in, especially with young people, even if you claim to be Christian, a lot of people aren't pursuing those things. And there is this battle. And so we have to devote ourselves to the word and what it says and fill ourselves up with it even as adults, because if we don't, the world, what it says, what it does, what, what it's pouring into our lives is going to take over. And so we have to know what the word says. And so we're, thank you for sharing that. Kendall, what, what, what would you say what it's like being a young Christian in 2021? It is definitely difficult. I've had, it's so like um, in October, my cheer team, they went to the 13th gate on a Sunday. And the year last, like the year before, I had skipped it. Like, I'd skipped a youth group to go to the 13th gate just because, oh, it's bonding with the cheer team. So, like, but when I told them, oh, no, I'm not going, I'm going to youth group, they were like, what? 
-hmm. why would you why would you skip like a team bonding thing to go to church like church is not fun why would you do that and i'm like i mean my church is fun (laughs) maybe yours isn't don't have to go judging me i don't know but it's definitely hard just (laughs) because the christians are i feel like they say they're christians but then they go out they do worldly things they like tease people about their faith. Like I'll talk about Jesus at school sometimes and they're like, wow, that girl is weird because she's talking about Jesus. And I'm like, it's kind of mean. <laughs> <laughs> and it's definitely difficult. And then whenever you're not talking about Jesus, like there's a lot of people who like wear cross necklaces, but then go ahead and they, they cuss, they drink. And then they, they go to church the next morning and they're like, I am a perfect Christian. I am the best. Hmm. And I'm like, that's kind of weird. It's just, it's challenging to know who is real and who can you actually, like, be like, okay, so I, I can do that, and yeah. I can't do that. Yeah. Kind of like what Colin said. Yeah. Well, and one thing I want to say, if following Jesus makes you weird, then we're okay with being weird. Mm-hmm. Um, and we want to be weird then because Jesus is the best thing for us, most important thing for us, and um, he's everything, right? And so, yeah, and a lot of he- what I'm hearing is, you know, you got a lot of people that say they're Christian, but they don't live it. But you're trying to live for Christ. But then these people that are supposed to be my friends or say they follow Jesus, who should be my support group, but they say they're Christians, don't live a life for Christ at all. So I'm kind of just either isolated or, you know, I don't know who else to, to really confide in because nobody else is truly living for Christ like I want to. And so, yeah, and I'm sure that's challenging. And, you know, probably I would imagine hurts a lot of times because there's a lot of hypocrisy. And, and you know, we can all be hypocrites. Let's be honest about that. But... You know, it especially hurts when it comes from the people that you want to know Jesus and that they they say they do, but that love of Christ is not pouring out of them. It's definitely difficult because, like, you'll have friends that will say that they're Christian and you tell them all your problems, you tell them your deepest, darkest secrets, and then they'll, like, hurt you. And you're like, wow, why would Jesus ever let anybody do that to me? Right. And, like, it's kind of like Satan creeps in and lets you think that Jesus is the bad one. And God is the one that's doing everything wrong. And you should never talk to anybody ever again. You should go through everything right. alone. So it's definitely hard to like live your life to live your life through Christ and for him whenever you're a teenager. Yeah. Or uh, especially for me, like I'll tell people my problems. And um, I don't know who else feels this, but I do at least. I'll tell people my problems and then they'll be like, Okay, yeah, yeah, I respect that and then the next day, they're trying to get me to do exactly what's causing the problem. Right. Mm-hmm. Instead of holding you accountable. Yeah, and, and trying to help me work through it. Yeah. Or I'll bring something up to them, like, you know, maybe we shouldn't do that. And they'll like, the, the, uh, like Kendall said, they'll tease you for it. They'll make fun of you for it. Or, you know, your friends will, at least my, my friends will punch me for it. <laughs> yeah. I have being friends. Yeah. Um, right. And then... So they're always trying to, like... Get you back in the world. Yeah, yeah. They, yeah. they say they're helping you, but they're not really helping right. you. So it's hard to find that person that really wants yeah. the best for you. Yeah. Well, and our thing is we hope our youth, you know, this place is a safe place for you to live a life for Jesus, to, to be bold about it, and to have that community that you guys are uh, desiring. And so, you know, we're so thankful that you guys came up here. That's kind of all the questions I have for you guys. Um, I'm going to have you guys help me with communion here in a little bit. Um, But we're thankful for you guys. We just want to say thank you for coming up here. Um, You guys killed it. You're awesome. Um, And, you know, we're so excited for your willingness to be bold and share about Jesus and what he's done in your life. And so for you guys, let this be an encouragement. Um, You know, Kendall and Colin came up here to talk about Jesus and talk about personal things in our life. And let that be encouragement that you can do it too. I mean, our youth are full of some of your sons, your daughters, your friends, sons and daughters. They're just people you know, youth you know. And you know, let, let them inspire you with, their fact that, with the fact that they wanted to devote themselves to Jesus. And so we're going to get ready to head into communion here. And if you guys